Hello to all and once again welcome to Sail to MDS Dental Academy from Dr. Malik Jiri. I hope everybody is working hard towards their goal that is MDS. Before that I want to quote Thomas Alva Edison. He told that our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The best thing we have to do in the life is always try again and again. So please friend. Do not lose your motivation and keep on trying. And I want to thank everybody for uh, subscribing and liking. Uh, so there are certain questions asked by a few viewers. That first question they ask that how to approach to these videos. There are three ways you can approach to the videos. The first way is the audio. You can plug your headset and you can hear the full chapter within 15 to 20 minutes. The second thing is you can quickly go through the, go through the notes given on the screen and third is like a classroom you can watch out on the screen the points written along with the audio and second question they are asking that my presentations are always a combination of the handwritten notes and ppt so why i am using the handwritten notes is just a law of attraction of mind remember whenever you are saying something if you have written by your hand or something handwritten the attraction towards the things will be more so i have kept this idea we can change later on if you people want so friend the topic of today presentation will be odontogenic cyst so friends let's get started so friends odontogenic cyst so how this odontogenic cyst get developed very simple it is the abnormal proliferation of the odontogenic epithelium by some unknown stimulus okay so why we have to study cyst is of very good clinical importance because cyst tend to cause a facial asymmetry uh, disturbance of a dentition and in some cases neurological deformities this cyst some in some cases when a cyst is very large it predisposes the jaw to fracture so cyst is very important both from the clinical point of view and also from your exam point of view so cramer view what is the cramer view there are many definition given by the cyst by the clnk by who but the most suitable definition for the cyst is being given by the cramer what cramer has told he has told a cyst is a pathological cavity maybe consists of a gas fluid or a semi fluid a cyst can occur either in hard as well as soft tissue you know some example of soft tissue i have told in my previous videos like a nasal alveolar cyst so you can go to those fissure or the developmental cyst they mostly occur in the soft tissue so let's go to the general features of the cyst before going to the cyst in particular so small cyst versus large cyst what is a small cyst no uh, small cyst or large cyst they are often diagnosed on the basis of the extent and dimension of the cyst the cyst gets large by the expansion <coughs> there are normal three type of expansion pattern of the alveolar bone it can expand either buccally or labially lingually or a bone remember if you see the expansion both buccally and the lingually it is indicative of some other lesion rather than a cyst most of the odontogenic cyst like a solitary uh, cyst like almost all typical odontogenic cyst they tend to expand buccally or a labially but in case of cyst of third molar region or a cyst involving the ramus they tend to expand the lingually okay so how this expansion occur whenever the cyst get expand there will be a subperiosteal deposition of the bone so which becomes a outline of that pathological cavity and that causes the cyst to expand then a window formation window formation is nothing but a summit of a convex cyst so when a cyst expansion occur sometime what happen the alveolar bone gets thinned out and is unable to support that a subperiosteal deposition so in such cases what happen there will be a no bone in that area a convexity will form and that is a window formation then axial cracking whenever some what happen when you uh, palpate the cyst sometimes you can feel the sensation the sensation get uh, spread out how so in 
cases when the cysts tend to expand what happens the thin alveolar bone gets fragmented and this fragment fragments will transfer the sensation of axial cracking when you pulse it remember this axial cracking you can see anywhere where there is a subperiosteal deposition of the bone like you can see the garis osteomalacia there also you can see the axial cracking then a vitality of the teeth why i have pointed out this important term vitality of teeth associated with this because whenever you find a cyst we try to extract the cyst but remember in most of the cases the teeth are a vital for example in case of the uh, dentigerous cyst or a solitary cyst odontogenic keratocyst fistral cyst lateral periodontal cyst the teeth are vital but in case of inflammatory cyst like a radicular cyst uh, the surface periodontal cyst the teeth are non vital so judge the vitality of teeth before putting it okay then a classification of cyst So it's the latest classification given by WHO in the 2017. The cysts are of two types. It can be either developmental or inflammatory. In inflammatory, two variants are there: radicular cyst and the collateral inflammatory cyst. In developmental, it can be a dentigerous cyst. Okay, so there is a odontogenic keratocyst cyst, glandular odontogenic cyst, lateral periodontal cyst, calcifying odontogenic cyst, and a gingival cyst. the subbotted odontogenic cyst is one of the variant of the lateral periodontal cyst then how the cyst get enlarged there are numerous theories given by harris shield etc but i have pointed out in very short that is something get attracted retain production and the resorption what happen in the cyst cavity there will be attraction of the fluid okay the fluid get a retain because of the retention of the fluid there will be a production of internal hydrostatic pressure which causes the resorption of the surrounding bone and in that way the cyst will enlarge okay friends so then go to the let's go to the other point there are common areas of occurrence of cyst remember the periodontal cyst can occur anywhere in the arch upper arch or the lower arch upper jaw is more predilected for the fistral In the lower jaw, we get found uh, mostly in the anterior area, the calcifying odontogenic cyst. In the premolar area, the globular odontogenic cyst, and in the posterior molar area, there can be a dentigerous cyst or the OKC. Remember, OKC can also involve the angle and the ramus of mandible. So let's start with the cyst, a dentigerous cyst. The dentigerous cyst is also known as a follicular cyst or a pericolar cyst. Why follicular cyst? because it involves the follicular cyst there will be an expansion of that follicle remember the normal follicular space is 3 mm but if it is more than 5 mm it indicates some dentigerous cyst then the pericoronal cyst remember the dentigerous cyst you can see in the figure that it surround the neck of the tooth at the teeth that's why it is known as the pericoronal cyst it is one of the most important diagnostic points okay then how the cyst get originate the there are many theory but the most apt theory is the from the cells of reduced enamel epithelium what happen the fluid get accumulate between the layers of reduced enamel epithelium or sometimes between the crown of the unerupted tooth and the reduced enamel epithelium the most commonly the cyst can be seen in the second and third decade but nowadays the cysts are also seen in the pediatric patient associated with the deciduous cyst so please all dentists out there whenever you are seeing the pediatric patient with involving pulp do proper pediatric endodontics otherwise it, it, it can be seen in the future with some or the kind of the so dentigerous cyst is most commonly in the male and uh, commonly involved teeth are impacted to so what are the most common impacted to third molar and the canine so they are a seen associated with the dentigerous cyst now a radiographic variance of So, forma has given a three types: central type, lateral type, and the circumferential type. And Moshi has given a class one and class two. Class one is associated with the unerupted tooth, and class two is associated with the partially erupted tooth. So, let's see with the radiographic variants. So, here you can see the lateral type, circumferential type, and the central type. The lateral type is the most commonly seen. Okay, so you can see how the literally. The cyst is there. Okay, 
In case of the circumferential type, the cyst is surrounded the whole crown. Like you can see, the crown is sitting in the sorry, uh, teeth is sitting, tooth is sitting in the cyst. And in central type, we can see here the symmetric distribution of the cyst around the neck of the. Then let's go to the histopathology. You can see here the absence of radiolysis. Okay, but in case of infected cyst, you can find out some red effects. And sometimes what you can see in the epithelium, rustum bodies are also seen. Rustum bodies are nothing but the curved hyaline bodies. Okay, what is the most important hallmark feature of this dangerous cyst? The capacity to expand. It can cause a hollowing out process. Remember, the dentigerous cyst is the most aggressive cyst with a least recurrence. Okay, so dentigerous cyst can convert into the amyloblastoma in more than 17% of cases. The lining of the cyst can either convert to the amyloblastoma or a mucoabudermate carcinoma. In such cases, the amyloblastoma is known as a mural amyloblastoma. Sometimes this dentigerous cyst is also known as a blue dome cyst. What is a blue dome cyst? Whenever the the content of the cyst contains blood, it is known as a blue loop cyst. How you will treat the cyst depends on the size. You can either go for the mass stabilization or surgical drainage, or you can go for the decompression in which the, the cyst is kept open and allow the drainage to occur. So that was about the dentigerous cyst.